For some people, towing a trailer is an everyday occupational occurrence. For others, it's something they do as a leisure pursuit, perhaps at weekends or during holiday periods. One thing's for certain, the ability to tow greatly increases the benefits and versatility of owning a motor vehicle. Hello, I'm Sarah Hay. And this program, as the title suggests, is about the practicalities of towing. From the 1st of January 1997, the legal requirements governing what you can and cannot tow have altered. So, whether you've towed for years or are just contemplating having a tow bar fitted to your car for the first time, we hope that this practical guide to towing will be of benefit to you. Helping me to present this programme is Peter McCann, who's been braving the harsh winter elements of North Yorkshire. We'll try and demystify those different weights, measures and ratios to help you make the most informed choice possible when it comes to what to tow and, of course, what to tow it with. And if you're new to towing, we'll show you just how easy it can be to hitch up and go, guiding you through the areas where you'll need that extra little bit of care. Now, choosing the right car to suit your needs requires very careful consideration. It must have sufficient power and flexibility and great on-the-road stability so that at all times you can enjoy safe and pleasurable towing. Now, there's always been the debate as to whether it's best to have a manual or automatic transmission if you intend to tow. Both have their advantages. Manufacturers like Vauxhall have worked hard to ensure that whichever you choose, it's more than able to perform to maximum capability. An automatic transmission has torque converters, which are good for towing because they provide maximum torque at minimum speed. And if you opt for a manual, like I have here, ideally it should have a good low first gear to help when travelling very slowly or when moving off on a hill. So, basically, the choice is down to you. Another point to consider is suspension. It helps if the car's rear suspension is reasonably firm, otherwise the trailer or caravan may tend to exaggerate every bump in the road, causing the car to wallow. Adjustable rear suspension can overcome this, preventing the tail end of the car from being weighed down, and this ensures maximum stability on bends and when braking. Matching the vehicle to the unit to be towed is of paramount importance for a variety of reasons, some of which we'll look at in greater detail later in the programme. In an ideal world, you'd aim to have the largest towing vehicle you could afford, coupled to the smallest trailer or caravan sufficient to meet your needs. But you should never tow a caravan or trailer which is too big and heavy for your vehicle. You could soon end up in a situation where the tail is wagging the dog. This could also lead to problems with a lack of adequate power and with difficulty in braking safely. This could not only put you and your family at risk, but also all other road users as well. So perhaps now would be a good time to look at some of those weight ratios. Here's Sarah. OK. So the first thing you'll need to know is what your vehicle's curb weight is. This is the amount that your car weighs without any passengers or luggage, but with a full tank of fuel and its spare wheel. Your vehicle's curb weight is defined by the manufacturer and can normally be found in the vehicle's handbook. The term unladen weight refers to the weight of a trailer or caravan without any load whatsoever. However, you'll need to know the actual laden weight or the gross trailer weight of whatever you're going to tow. This must include all the items you wish to carry in it, such as bedding, pots and pans, and awning in the case of a caravan, or horses if you're towing a livestock trailer. It's in your own best interests to know each of these weights for whatever you're towing. If you're in any doubt about what they are, you can take both caravan and car to the nearest public weighbridge. Your local trading standards officer should be able to tell you where it is. The Caravan Club recommends that you aim for a total towed load of no more than 85% of the car's curb weight, and you should never exceed the curb weight. When you add together the weight of your loaded car and loaded trailer, this gives you the gross combination weight, or train weight. The next thing to take into consideration is the nose weight of whatever you're towing. This is the amount of weight which is exerted onto the tow ball itself. And we'll show you a little later why this is so important. 
Nose weight scales such as these are available, but you may find it just as easy to use a set of bathroom scales. Cut a piece of wood to fit between the scales and the towing assembly at its correct travelling height. When you then lift the jockey wheel, you can read the nose weight from the bathroom scales. In this case, it's exactly 35 kilos. For caravans, it should be approximately 7% of the actual laden weight, which is why it's important to know this figure beforehand. Other trailers, particularly twin axle varieties, may be more stable with a different figure. So it might be a question of experimenting to find the ideal nose weight for optimum stability. Remember, you should never exceed the car or caravan manufacturer's recommended maximum nose weight. Your dealer will be happy to supply you with a list of these figures for your towing vehicle. After you've made sure that you have the right balance between the weight of the car and whatever you're going to tow, the next most important consideration is that your vehicle has sufficient power to pull the load effectively. Towing a trailer or caravan is more demanding of your car's mechanical systems, particularly the engine and transmission. Because of this, a high level of torque across a wide rev band becomes very important. Torque is a measure of pulling power. And expert opinion always recommends that you choose the most powerful engine you can afford. So, that when the towing gets tough, the tough get towing. Good power or torque delivery at the lower end of the rev band makes the car more economical and flexible at low speeds, minimizing the need for gear changing. This could be a very important factor if you're going to be carrying a live cargo, such as a horse in a trailer. The smoother the ride, the more comfortable a journey the horse will enjoy. And talking of horses, what about brake horsepower? Well, this is the amount of power that an engine produces at a given number of engine revs. The Caravan Club recommends that you should have 40 brake horsepower for every tonne of train weight as a minimum requirement for satisfactory towing. Train weight, if you remember, is the gross towing vehicle weight plus the gross trailer weight. Incidentally, all Vauxhall engines are designed to deliver low-end torque, which is only one of the factors which has helped Vauxhall cars to win numerous awards, including five times Tow Car of the Year. As we said earlier, the legal regulations with regard to driving licences have changed slightly, with effect from the 1st of January 1997. If you passed your test before this date, you'll retain your existing entitlement to tow. That is to say that you can carry on as you always have. Any driver who passes their car test after this date is entitled to tow a trailer of up to 750 kilograms. Larger trailers may be towed without a further test being taken if the vehicle combination doesn't exceed 3.5 tonnes and the gross trailer weight doesn't exceed the unladen weight of the towing vehicle. To drive larger vehicles and trailer combinations, new drivers must take an additional test, which will include being able to reverse into a restricted space and uncoupling and recoupling exercises. Horse trailers, heavy boats and some of the larger caravans, however, may fall into the heavier category. Restrictions as to the length and width of a trailer remain the same. The normal maximum permissible length is 7 metres, which is measured excluding the drawbar and coupling. The maximum permissible width is 2.3 metres. All horse trailers have twin axles and only one specific place for the animals to stand, actually over those axles, which means that the weight distribution is largely taken care of. But with a caravan, however, where you distribute the weight of your load and the resultant nose weight become much more important. Because a caravan is free to swing behind the towing vehicle, any heavy weight at the extreme rear will only serve to increase the pendulum effect, and that could lead to snaking. This is the correct way to load a caravan. Heavier items should be stowed over the wheels and as low as possible. The next heaviest items should be stowed at the front and lighter objects at the back. 
The lower the load is, the lower the center of gravity, and therefore the more stable. This is when being able to calculate the nose weight becomes most important. Too much or too little nose weight can affect the towing capability in a variety of ways. It can cause potential problems with handling by making the steering too light or allow instability to cause the caravan to snake. Headlight levels can be affected, but fortunately many modern vehicles are now equipped with a device to compensate when towing, an ideal solution to this particular problem. Whilst we're talking about loading for a journey, let's take a look at some of the other things which it would be a good idea for you to carry with you when towing. An adequate toolkit is a must, especially to enable you to deal with a wheel change should the need arise. And if you have to do this at the roadside, a warning triangle is an essential piece of equipment to help keep you safe and will alert other motorists to any potential danger. Incidentally, this item is mandatory in many European countries. It's always common sense to carry a first aid kit, but a portable fire extinguisher is also a good safeguard, particularly for caravanners. Another useful item is a spirit level, so that when you arrive at your campsite, you can make sure that your worktops, table, and most importantly, your cooker top, are all as level as possible. Vauxhall dealers carry a comprehensive range of these and other accessories for your convenience. And if you're planning a family holiday which includes lots of outdoor pursuits, perhaps a roof carrier or roof box will help with loading all the necessary items. Luggage, bicycles and other sports equipment can be carried safely in this way. But a word of advice, make sure you fit a good quality roof carrier system, one which is specifically engineered for your vehicle. The first and most important piece of equipment is of course the tow bar and it's advisable to choose one which is recommended by the vehicle's manufacturer. It should be fully type approved and meet current European standards. In fact, in many countries, this is already a legal requirement on new vehicles. Coupling your caravan or trailer to your vehicle is really just common sense. It's a good idea to get into the habit of performing this as a set routine and that way you're less likely to forget an important function such as raising the jockey wheel. Now we start off by finding some level ground like this and preferably on hard standing and this will prevent a struggle when maneuvering the trailer and the whole process is always made much easier if you have someone to help you. So let's see how it's done. First of all make sure that the handbrake is on, the jockey wheel is down and the four corner stays are fully retracted. Then raise the towing assembly until it's higher than the level of the tow ball. Now guide your helper back until the tow ball is in the correct place. That's it. Thank you. Raise the coupling handle, then lower the unit onto the tow ball until, watch this, the coupling handle clicks into place. And now double check that the unit is locked on. On modern caravans, there's a hitch engaged button to give you a visual confirmation. European regulations require trailers to be fitted with a breakaway cable, and it must be used at all times when towing. This is so that in the unlikely event that the caravan becomes detached from the towing vehicle, the brake will automatically be applied to the caravan when the cable pulls tight and then snaps. It should be fixed to the specific point on the towing bracket, and not just simply looped around the tow ball. Now comes that easily forgotten step of making sure that the jockey wheel is fully retracted and secure. There we are. Next, we come on to the electrics. And for road driving, any tow bar comes with a 7-pin 12N socket, normally coloured black, to power all the road lights. So the trailer plug must be connected into that. With a caravan, you may also have a second 12S socket, normally coloured grey or white, to connect up to power the internal lights and equipment. So that too must be plugged in. And to just finish off, make sure there's enough slack in the cable to allow the caravan to turn, but not too much so that they drag along the ground. And the last job in this area is to release the handbrake. But that's not quite the end of the story. 
Right indicator. Left indicator. Before you go out on the road, get your helper to help you check that all of your road lights are working. Brakes. Side lights. And reversing lights. Right, now we're ready to go. Many of the legal requirements for towing on the road today are a matter of simple common sense. Of course, you have to have a corresponding rear number plate which is illuminated after dark, as well as running lights, brake lights and indicators. Indicators should flash at a rate of 60 to 120 flashes per minute and a warning device in the car must inform the driver that the system is functioning correctly. The legal criteria for tyres applies every bit as much to trailers and caravans as it does to towing vehicles. Get into the habit of checking your tyre pressures regularly, before each journey is a good idea. You'll need to make sure that your insurance policy covers you for towing, as well as for whatever you intend to tow. It'll also be your responsibility to operate a routine maintenance programme for your trailer, which, after all, is only common sense. Be aware that speed limits alter slightly once you're towing. The upper limit on roads which are normally subject to a 70 mile per hour speed limit becomes 60 miles per hour when towing. On other unrestricted single lane roads, the limit for towing is 50 miles per hour. Where the speed limit's below this, of course, it applies equally to vehicles towing trailers. Oh, and on motorways, you must keep to the near side and centre lanes only. Of course, towing is not just limited to caravans. There are horse trailers and a whole variety of smaller trailers which are very useful for all sorts of jobs around the home and garden, like clearing garden rubbish, collecting bulky items, or even helping with a house move. A small, well-balanced trailer is very easy to connect up to a tow bar, and this can usually be done by just one person on their own. Well, what about a spot of sailing? Simply load your boat onto its trailer and away you go. Jet skiing is also becoming increasingly popular and there are relatively small, lightweight trailers which are manufactured especially to carry jet skis. You could well find that your weekends are suddenly very much busier. Driving whilst towing is not complicated or difficult, but concentration and anticipation are essential at all times. When towing, your outfit will be longer, higher and wider than you're used to. And because of this, you'll need to keep an eye out for high restrictions, protruding signs and overhanging trees. You won't be able to swerve to avoid hazards or to accelerate so easily out of difficult situations as you would if driving just a car. The ability to use your wing mirrors becomes quite essential when towing and to enable you to do so you should fit mirror extensions like these. You'll then be able to see around your trailer or caravan to check for traffic. You'll need to allow a little more room when cornering because the trailer or caravan wheels will not follow exactly in the tracks of the towing vehicle but will cut the corner slightly. And when braking you have to take into account the extra weight of your trailer and its load and begin the manoeuvre somewhat earlier than usual. Good brakes are essential and anti-lock brakes, or ABS as the system is called, is a real boon for towing. ABS will help to prevent wheel lock under heavy braking whilst allowing you to maintain steering control. Recent caravan club testing has shown conclusively that the braking distance of cars towing caravans are considerably reduced if the towing car is equipped with ABS. Now, what about that dreaded hill start? Because the chances are that at some time during your towing career, you're going to have to make a start from a hill at least as bad as this. But there are a couple of things you can do to help yourself. One is that if there are curb stones beside the road, you can allow the caravan to drop back at an angle till the wheels are touching the curb stone. And that'll help you to not roll back any further. Some people bring chocks along with them, and in a situation like this, they tie them to the back of the caravan, and then as they move off, they wait till they get to the top of the hill, and then they remember to pick them up and put them back inside. But whatever you do, 
the one thing that is important is that you keep the revs up on your engine as you release the clutch gently. And hopefully, you should make a smooth getaway. Overtaking requires extra care for beginners, so here are some points you should be aware of. First, make sure that you're in the correct gear, and after checking your mirrors, indicate, and then pull out in plenty of time. Leave yourself enough room before pulling back in to rejoin the line of traffic. Now, in this country, many lorry drivers will flash their headlights after you've overtaken them, and that's to tell you that it's safe to pull back in. So, you can therefore afford them the same courtesy when they've overtaken you. Snaking, which is when the trailer begins to sway from side to side, rather than following the line of the towing vehicle, can be a worry even to experienced tow car drivers. Accelerating downhill, side winds on exposed motorways, and being overtaken by big lorries can all be classic causes of snaking. It's far better never to drive so fast that this can happen. Keeping to a sensible speed and in the left of the lane can help avoid the situation. However, there are steps you can take to correct snaking if it does happen to you. Most importantly, never break suddenly to try and correct a snake, as you could well make things worse. It can cause the trailer to suddenly catch up to the towing vehicle when out of balance, leading to a serious jackknife, or at the very worst, a complete turnover. Neither should you accelerate, nor try to make steering corrections against the direction of the snake. The correct thing to do is to gently lift off the accelerator and allow your vehicle to slow down gradually whilst maintaining as straight a course as possible. If you are going downhill, then apply the brakes very gently. When the trailer is following peacefully in the wake of the towing vehicle once more and your heart rate has returned to normal, you can proceed on your journey at a sensible speed. Many drivers choose to fit a stabiliser, which is a tensioning device fitted between the tow bar of your car and the draw bar of your caravan. This can help settle any trailer sway caused by side winds or overtaking vehicles, but it is not a cure for excessive speed or poor outfit matching and loading. Reversing is another area which some people are concerned about. In fact, it's not difficult and practice will make perfect. Fire assisted steering is now available on many cars and that combined with these towing extension mirrors makes maneuvering very much easier. Firstly, don't be afraid to ask someone to help by seeing you back. And the key to successful reversing is slowly does it. What most beginners to towing find hard to comprehend is that you need to use the opposite steering lock than usual in order to place the rear of the caravan or trailer where you want it to go. For instance, if you want the caravan to go to the right, you initially apply a left steering lock and vice versa. By moving slowly and turning the steering wheel a little at a time, you can quickly correct the angle of reverse before jackknifing occurs. Turn, straighten, turn, and straighten is the best way to go. Once the caravan is heading in the direction you want, you can apply the opposite lock so that the car follows it round in a natural arc. If you do jackknife, simply pull forward onto a straight line and try once again. Remember to keep checking forward to make sure that you're not about to hit anything with the front wing of your vehicle. If you can, try and find somewhere quiet and spacious to allow you to get the hang of reversing before you have to do it for real, perhaps in public. Four-wheel drive can also be a big help here, particularly if you find yourself having to manoeuvre in adverse conditions. If you're a horse owner, you could well find yourself having to extricate your vehicle and your trailer from a muddy field. The ability to engage four-wheel drive will get you out of many sticky situations. 
If you wish, you can take advantage of one of the many excellent practical caravanning courses operated by the Caravan Club. These usually consist of a mixture of classroom and practical instruction and cover the principles of safe and efficient towing, weight distribution and maintenance. The idea of a continental holiday which allows you to travel to different places at your own pace and have all your home comforts when you get there is very appealing. There are only a few basic points to remember when planning a towing holiday abroad. If you want to travel through several countries, it's worth double-checking the documentation requirements and towing regulations for each one. And for a start, once on the continent, you'll have to remember to drive on the right. A wing mirror extension on the passenger side is therefore a must. Road signs are clearly marked, but speed limits are marked in kilometres per hour, not miles, and often vary from one country to another. Fines can be hefty and are often on the spot, so it's very important to keep within the speed limit. An insurance green card is also strongly recommended. Carrying a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher and a warning triangle is a good practice at any time, but perhaps even more so when travelling abroad. Spare light bulbs may also be a great advantage. Clip-on headlamp protectors can save cutting out those fiddly deflectors and GB stickers are a must. Booking your campsites in advance will also save you the worry of not being able to get into a site on spec at the height of the season. If your caravan is converted for mains use on campsites, then you'll need the correct adapter when staying in foreign countries. The Caravan Club Continental Sites Guide and Handbook contains a great deal of useful information. We hope that this program has answered most of the questions that you may have had with regard to safe towing. But it's worth mentioning here that both caravans and trailers of all types are available for short-term hire. However, the legal requirements apply to whatever you're towing, whether it's yours or you've hired it. Now, the last thing that we want to do is to baffle you with the specialist terminology which is attached to towing. So here's a quick reference list for you. Curb weight. This is the weight of the towing vehicle without driver or passengers, but with any loose tools and equipment which normally comes with it. It includes a full tank of fuel, but not the towing bracket. Gross towing vehicle weight. This is the weight of the towing vehicle when carrying its usual load of passengers and other luggage. Towing limit. This is the statement by the manufacturer giving the maximum weight which the car will tow when starting on a gradient, usually one in eight. Unladen weight. This is the weight of a trailer without any load. This can vary due to accessory options and should always be checked on a certified weighbridge. X works weight. This is the weight of a caravan when new, with standard fixtures and fittings, as stated by the caravan manufacturer. Actual laden weight. This is the total weight of the caravan and its contents when being towed. Payload. This is the weight of the load that a trailer is permitted to carry. Gross trailer weight, or maximum authorised mass, MAM, these refer to the total weight of a trailer, including its maximum payload. Maximum laden weight. This is the maximum weight for which a caravan is designed for normal use, being towed when laden. Train weight. This is combined weight of the gross towing vehicle weight and the gross trailer weight. Nose weight. That part of the weight of the caravan or trailer supported by the rear of the towing vehicle via the towing bracket. You see, there's really nothing to it. But finally, before you set off to tow anywhere, make the following checks to ensure your safety.
After 20 minutes traveling time, stop to check the outfit one more time before proceeding. Remember, if you check the trailer wheels and find them hot to the touch, this could indicate a binding brake which would need attention. Drive steadily at a sensible speed and remember to allow yourself extra time and distance for braking to allow for the extra weight behind. And finally, always allow plenty of time for your journey. Having to rush can make you flustered and spoil your concentration. We hope that you will derive much pleasure from towing with your Vauxhall vehicle. We sincerely hope that we've been able to provide you with the most comprehensive information available. We'd like to think that we've enabled you to make the best possible informed choice in order to enjoy safe and stress-free towing. Goodbye.